The true story of a perilous search for the lost tomb of an ancient tribal queen, as told by adventurer Comparator the Rock. Behind the coastal cities of North Africa stretches the burning wasteland of the Sahara Desert. Mysterious and brooding, the death dealing Sahara swallows men, beasts, and machines, searing with heat, choking with sand, withering a man's skin to shrunken leather, sucking the last drop of moisture from his body until he falls mad from thirst to a white hot grave under the merciless sun. Yet men have fought to learn the secrets of the Sahara. Geologists, explorers, and archaeologists like myself. For the Sahara holds a key to the early origins of man. It was in 1924 that I first flew over the Sahara Desert in search of the lost tomb of the ancient queen, King Hinan. My pilot, Pierre Dumont, and I took off from Algiers one morning right after dawn. Head straight for the mountains beyond our plateau, Pierre. That's almost to the southern border of Algeria. Right. Okay. We'll set our course south, southeast of the compass. What's so important about this old queen, this Dean Hinan, as you call her? Well, she's supposed to be the ancestress of all these warriors. And if we can find her tomb, the relics were buried with her, might tell us something about the history of these mysterious people. The fire and the Tuareg are the fiercest fighters of the desert. If they get wind of our scheme, our lives won't be worth a plug nickel. I know it. That's why this whole expedition must be kept absolutely secret. And if word does leak out, we'll have a machine gun with us. But I hope we won't have to use it. The Tuareg are a fine people. All right, now. We're over the Algarve Plateau, Pierre. Do a little to the south. Jack, fly as low as you can. I can't go much lower. Cross wind in one of these canyons would spin the plane like a matchstick. We'd crash, sure. I've got to see the ground more clearly. I'll never locate the tomb. Okay, I'm straight as fine as I can. Look, yeah. See that bottle of stones to the right? Yeah. Looks like all the rest of them need. No, no, it's too regular to be natural. That mound was made by man. You mean that's your fabulous tomb? It's a tomb. And it's ancient. See how those rocks are weathered? I want to see the close-up photograph of it. Can you fly through the gorge? If we get caught by a downdraft, we're almost sure to crack. I'm willing to take a chance. How about you? Okay. Well, I hope you made out your will. Get your camera ready. Bank around and commence in the north. <laughs> Now you're headed right. Throttle down, right in. This gorge is so narrow, it's like flying down Wall Street. Whoa, I can't you get any lower. We're almost straight in the rock now. Wait, I'm holding steady. I can't get a picture with a paint jerking around my head. I can't, I can't. The wind's got it. I've got to get that picture. Forget the picture. We'd be lucky to get out of here alive. We're almost there. I'll have to hang over the side. Don't be a fool. The wind is jerking right out of the way. There. I've got it. All right, just hold on now. Are you kidding? I can't hold the stick in this wind. I'm headed straight for the cross at the end of the door. Put on your crash on this thing. I'm just kidding now. Sir, we'll be free to bring the wall to another minute. Oh, my, don't get the mountain too. What's your life? There's a side tank. Can you turn in there? Yeah, I'm going to try. Hang on. Back at our base in Algiers, Pierre and I hired an excellent Arab guide named Moussag and made plans for the expedition to the tomb we'd found. The camel caravan set out six months in advance to plant food for the party and gasoline for the special four ton trucks that we planned to travel in. You see, these huge trucks have 12 wheels and are designed to go 400 miles across the burning sands without stopping for gas or water. Our equipment included cameras, light lights, pickaxes, guns, several dozen spare tires, and most important of all, Company. Well, at last, all preparations were complete, and in our two huge trucks, we roared out into the desert. A few days later, we entered the Grand Air Gorian Tal, the most terrible desert country in the world. Well, so far, our journey had been uneventful. 
But on our first evening in this land of towering dunes and shifting sands, while we were waiting for Musag, our guide, to cook supper, Pierre and I set out to climb a nearby dune in search of ancient rubble. Hey, this dune is steeper than I thought. Yeah. Still a ways to go before we get to the top. Yeah. What kind of relics do you expect to find up here? Maybe some early stone weapons. If you see any large pieces of rock, pick them up. Right. Surrounding dunes don't look alike from here. That's why it's so infernally easy to get lost in the Sahara. Oh, here we are at the top. That was sure some climb. The view is hardly worth it. Just more of the same. Wait a minute. What's that big piece of stone down there? Huh? Come on, yeah, let's have a look at it. Yes, it's what I think it is. Our climb is worthwhile. Sure, a lot easier going down as far as climbing up the other side. Look! A perfect coup de poids. It's like an awfully crude stone hatchet to me. What? That's what it is here. Think of the work that went into chipping this out of print with nothing but stone tools. You mean this, this is from the Stone Age? How long ago was that? Probably more than 50,000 years. Well, let's look a little further. Maybe we can find some more. All right. We still have time. Uh, let's try uh, the foot of that dune over there and circle back to the camp. I'm glad this is the last dune we have to climb before we get back to camp. This sand is really hard to walk in. Yeah. A minute now, we'll see more strikes fire. Supper ought to be ready by this time. It's been gone an hour. These last two steps are all I can manage. Yeah. That was suddenly a climb. Hey. Say, huh? where's the campfire? Why, right down the... Huh? Well, it ought to be right at the bottom of this dune. Oh, that's just our luck. We climbed the wrong dune. We might check the compass. I left it in my coat back at the camp. Let's have a look at yours, yeah? Well, I didn't bring mine. I thought you had yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's stop and think this thing out right now. If we start walking without a compass, we'll just go around in circles. If we hurry back the way we came, we can follow our own footsteps. Not this evening. There's too much wind. The tracks on this dune are already filled in. Yeah, you're right. What do we do? No, no, no. Don't get panicked. But the dunes all look alike, as far as you can see. But we know the camp's behind one of them. Yes, but which one? Well, all we have to do is signal Mustag. I'll fire a shot. Maybe he'll think we're just shooting at some animal. I'll make sure he doesn't think that. It's getting darker about the second. They were a couple of fools to forget our compasses. We had them now. We could cover this whole area in a systematic fashion and eventually locate the camp. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just sit here. Matter of fact, that's the best thing to do, Pierre, because after a while, Mustard will start searching for us. In the dark? He'll never find it. I'm going to do something about it. Don't be a fool. Come back. I'll find the camp by myself. Wait, Pierre! <laughs> I can't go on, Byron. Well, I'm glad you've come to your senses, Pierre. I only hope we haven't run so far that Mustard can't find it. Let me have your revolver. Mine's empty. Revolver? What are you going to do? I'm going to signal Mustard again. Save two bullets for us. That'll be better than a lingering death from thirst. All right. I'll only fire two more shots. It's no use. The Sahara will claim us, too. We haven't got a chance. Look. Look, what's that? Huh? Where? Behind us. Those beams of light. Well, it looks like a searchlight in the sky. It's the most dark. He's tilted up the headlights on the truck. We're safe. By him, we're safe. Come on, let's go. Slow down, Pierre. That must be the oasis. I uh, think that's one of our markers to the left. You mean one the advanced caravan planted? Yeah, should be a well around here, too. That's good. Our water supplies down a half a barrel. Monsieur de Prolock, we have reached the marker. Yes, Moussak, I know. We got the drums of gasoline and food as quickly as you can. Yes, monsieur. How's the gas supply holding out here? There's still gasoline. It's water I'm interested in. Both the truck radiators ought to be flushed out as soon as possible. Monsieur! Yeah. Monsieur de Prolock! Come on, better find out what's the matter with Moussak. I hope nothing's happened to the supplies. Monsieur, this terrible thing. What is it, Moussaki? Half the gasoline has evaporated from the heat. What are we to do? Evaporate it? What about the food? My drum of food is here. Oh, well, at least that's a break point. Have you looked at the well? But that is the worst of all, monsieur. There is no water. What? No water? The well is filled up with sand. Come, I will show you. Water is the one thing we can't do without. Maybe if we dig down far enough, we can still find water. See, monsieur. 
He is dry as the Sahara in Yes, you're right. Wait a minute. What are all these hoofprints around the well? They look like camel tracks. It may have been another caravan. Or perhaps the Tuareg have done this on purpose. But they need water too. Why should they destroy a well? It is an old Tuareg trick to keep strangers out of their country. Well, we've got to have water. I could drink a gallon myself right now. We've got to push on as fast as we can. The next well is in the Gorge of Arak. Oh, no, Mr. Let us not go that way. The Gorge is a curse. That's the nearest well. It's a two-day trip. We'll be out of water within 24 hours. We have to go that way. But the canyon is inhabited by evil genes, monsieur. They throw great rocks and boulders down on any caravan that tries to go through. Don't worry about those evil spirits, Mossad. We'll throw the rocks right back at them. <laughs> No use, Pierre. We'll have to move those folders out of our way. There's room to get between them and the cliff. Come on. We'll have to get out again. This is like building a road through a stone quarry. I warned you not to come through this gorge, monsieur. The evil genes that haunt this canyon will throw rocks down on our heads. Nonsense, Moussac. Is there even a drop of water left? No. Give me a hand with this folder here, Moussac. Yes, monsieur. You too, Pierre. Right. Oh, my foot. These rocks are as sharp as glass. That is why we have blown out seven tires in the dust in miles. Lift the boulder up, Mossad, while I push. Uh, 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 uh. Now we've got to do something about this deep hole. Yeah, yeah fill it up with some of those smaller rocks. Yeah. Side of the cliff. I'm Mossad and I shove these other boulders out of the way. Come on, Mossad. I can give my right arm for a glass of water. Evil spirits are watching us, monsieur. I can feel their presence. Well, you're not going to help matters any time at the cliff. Look out behind you. The whole cliff's coming. Hello. Come on, Mossad. This might be us. Good God. Half the side of that cliff sheared right off. Quick, monsieur. We must get out of here. The things are after us. Thank goodness it fell behind the trucks instead of in front. Hurry, right, dear. Try to drive on through. We've got to find water. Well, can't be more than a few more miles ahead. I can't go much further without water. My feet are so full of these hot rocks, I can hardly walk. Huh? Well, we'll stop for a moment and rest. How much farther is it to this mountain well, Mr. It is up there to the left, monsieur. But it does not look the way it did when I was last through here. I will go see. There's got to be a well here. The map indicates one at this point, doesn't it? A map to the Sahara was next to nothing to here because conditions changed so rapidly. We must go on, monsieur. What? This well is dry also. But I can't go on without water. You have to. There is another well about 20 miles ahead. Good. Climb in your truck. Let's get started. Wait, monsieur. Look. You have another flat tire. What? The right front wheel. Oh, that's the last go. All right. Get out the jack. We'll have to pull on another patch. <laughs> That's the place where the well is supposed to be, Mossad. I cannot say. It seems to me it was higher up in the side of the cliff. Water. We must have water. It'll be all right, Pierre. Water. We'll bring you some water in just a few minutes. Come on, Mossad. Water. Water. Yeah. Look, Monsieur. Up the side of the cliff. You see that crack in the rock? Where? There. To the right. See it, it's like an ordinary crevice to me. I think not, monsieur. I think it is the well. There are recent footprints and gazelle traps leading up there. See? I hope those footprints don't mean that I got filled up this one, too. That would be the end. We could not make the next well. We'll know in a minute. Keep going, Massage. Look, monsieur. Look, the rock is down. See? You're right. Hurry. Water, monsieur. The well is full. Drink sparingly at first, monsieur. Then fill the canteen quickly. We must get some back here. Oh, how wonderful. I think. Ah, 
After slicking our thirst and filling our canteens for the trip, we checked our compasses and continued south, southwest, by the French military outpost of Tamanrat. Only a few days' journey from the tomb. Well, after these many weeks of desert travel, we were all in high spirits as we pushed on through the night to reach this foreign region fort. When we arrived at the post, the French captain in charge showed us every courtesy. In answer to our question about native workers, he replied, I do not know about that, Monsieur Duperra. We only labor in these parts of the place of the Twilight. But we can't let the Tuareg know we're excavating the tomb of Queen King and Aunt. And we must have at least a dozen men to do the work. I could hire the place myself, and you could take him with you. Huh? That sounds good to me. But you will have to watch them very closely, or they will sneak off and report to them and ask what you are doing. One do you want to leave us, monsieur? Can you get them tomorrow? They think it can be arranged. Right? Good. That means that by the day after tomorrow, we should be able to start the next... Phil, can't get over the size of this tomb. Why, well, it's as large as one of the small pyramids of Egypt. There's no telling what's inside there. You are right, monsieur. Inside there may be only death. Listen, Mossad, I've had the jitters ever since we arrived in this Tuareg country, and this talk of yours isn't cheering me up any. Yes, I think your men have rested long enough, Mossad. Get them started to work again. Okay, get to work. Start moving your stones. How old do you think this tomb is, Byron? Well, I can tell better after the air. I guess now at least 3,000 years. And as near as termites or grave robbers have been here ahead of us, we should find some very amazing and valuable rubbish. Monsieur, the workers, they are superstitious. See, they do not like this mockery of the dead. They are saying the dead once buried are best left alone. They must have possibly come up here. What's that funny looking stone slab? It's an inscribed tablet with a writing cut into the stone. What language is it? Can you read it? I think it's an ancient Libyan. Massage. Tell them to remove the slab so we can see what's underneath. Sarge, move the slab, the sword, lift it off. Remove the sword, tablet, I say. Carry it to one side. You see, monsieur, they do not like it. We're paying them well for it, Mustard, and I expect them to do it at all. What's the matter with them anyway? If anybody's in there, they've been dead for 3,000 years. That is what you come under with them, monsieur. They do not care to leave anyone who has been dead 3,000 years. They've got it out, Mustard. Tell them to be more careful and not to drop it. Be careful with the stone. What's underneath? Do you see? Three huge stone slabs lying side by side. I'm sure this is the entrance for the burial chamber. It's characteristic of many African tombs. Quick, Mustard. Tell them to bring the crowbars and raise these slabs. Get the crowbars. Come, all of you. Leave the stone. <laughs> What if grave robbers have got to the tomb? Oh, these stones haven't been moved for centuries. You see how the workers are growing angry, monsieur? So long as they stay here and do their work, I don't care how angry they get. Remember what the captain said about their running back to the Tuareg. The Tuareg knew we were opening this tomb. Our dog is watching them carefully, and they're used to discipline. I don't think we'll have any real trouble with them. They can hardly budge the crowbar. The stone is so heavy. I think it's moving a little. Yeah. There's a crack at the edge. Look up, monsieur. The snake. What? Horn Piper came out of the tomb. He's falling toward us. Stand back there. Good. Good. You got me. Quick. Scott. That's one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. Monsieur, the workers have run away. What? They have already disappeared in the hills. They'll tell the Tuareg what we're doing here. Hurry. We'll have to finish excavating this tomb ourselves before the Tuareg attacks. <laughs> 